Um, so I guess what I've learned this year is that it's not going to be easy. Um, and it's probably challenging for a reason. And it's refining me in ways that I probably won't know for a while. Welcome back to the Cypress Room, where we dive deep on influencing with integrity. I'm Christina Mascari. And I'm Maggie Honeycutt. And welcome to our end of the year episode. I can't believe it's the end of the year. I can't believe we've been doing this for six months. We've been doing it for six months. This will be our 22nd episode. Yes. Can you believe that we actually did this? Yes, I can. (laughs) I can. We set our minds to it and we followed through and we were consistent, just like we talked about in episode four. I think we've done a good job. Yeah, so we're going to look back at what we've done in the past six months, uh, talk about some of our favorite episodes that you guys might have missed. Yes. Um, I think we're going to do our favorite, favorite, favorite thing of the whole year. Yes, which favorite is like, purchase of 2023. There's a lot to choose some. So that's going to be in our favorite things segment. Um, yeah, and we're just going to round out the year. This will be our last video until 2024. Yes. And we already have some really exciting things coming. You might notice we're in a little different setup today. Yes. We don't have our table here. Um, and that is because we just did our first remote interview Yay. and recorded it. And hopefully it's going to be coming out for you in 2024. We had an amazing guest that I think yes. I'm going to keep secret for now. Yes, you should. Um, and so we are hoping that that went well. We're going to take a look at that footage and edit it and everything. And we hope this is the beginning of lots of videos to come where we interview our friends and people that inspire us that are entrepreneurs, content creators, just smart business people. Like I'm very excited. Are you excited? I am. I'm excited to learn, um, from other people. I love hearing the different perspectives, what tools people have used to be successful in their business. Um, different approaches to business, the way they organize. I mean, I love learning from other people. And so I'm excited to um, have people on the show and interview them remotely. So fingers crossed that all that footage worked out. I know we (laughs) haven't checked it yet. So we don't know, but I'm very hopeful. And just let this be an encouragement to you guys, because at the beginning (laughs) of the year, 22 episodes ago, we didn't know what camera we needed to buy. We didn't know what microphones we needed to buy. We didn't know how to edit the video once we got it up. We didn't know how to sync our audio and our clips. We didn't know how to upload the podcast yes. audio. Uh, so that is how much we've learned in 22 episodes. And today, I think we tackled another thing. It took us a week to figure out what platform we wanted to do to do the remote podcasting and how to get the best quality for you guys, how to make it worth it and not just look like a fuzzy Zoom. Yes. So let this just be an encouragement to you that you don't have to know how to do anything. No. YouTube university is real. <laughs> Blog yes. posts are real. Your network, your friends are real. And you know what, if you don't press record, if you don't just press record, you'll never know. And you can make up so many excuses as to why you shouldn't start this. I make up excuses on the daily in between podcasts why we should <laughs> stop doing this. <laughs> but I think we've had fun. We've definitely had fun. And I think we've practiced what we preach. You know, we have been consistent. We've done some hard work. We've learned a lot. We're going to talk about that later. Lessons we've learned through this. And, you know, going into next year, what our hopes and dreams are for this space. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's fun. And I think we were talking about this before we hit record. And I kind of want you to talk about it. Because <laughs> Maggie has been going back and editing old videos to pull like short clips out to try to get some of our underrated episodes, which we're going to talk about later, more views. Mm-hmm. And what were you saying about the quality <laughs> <laughs> of maybe like episode three versus, you know, episode 20 that we just did? What's the differences? Um, I think there's a lot of differences. I've learned a lot in terms of just myself and speaking and how I present myself on camera using less filler words. Um, that is challenging. The, which has was very challenging for me in the beginning. And I didn't realize how much I did it until I watched episode four back. Uh, Mm -hmm. We've also learned a lot about podcast audio. And now we have a plug in that we use to kind of just clean up that audio, even though it wasn't terrible in the beginning. Man, that plug in just is 
top notch. I mean, it, the difference is amazing. Yeah. And that's an Adobe feature that we get because I subscribe to Lightroom and Photoshop and we get mm-hmm. that feature for free. I think it's in beta right now. Um, but we can upload, I think, up to like four or five hours yeah. a month that'll clean up. So I do it on my YouTube videos, too. So we'll put that link down in the description box yeah. if you're looking to level up your audio. Great tool. And also, we got a new camera, which... Yes. Oh, my gosh, Maggie, you're just <laughs> reminding me. When we first started this out, we were using my old Canon. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys know this about Canons. It's still a great camera. It only records in HD, so no 4K. Um, but it only records for 30 minutes yes. and we would be deep in a thought and it would just shut off and we'd be like, no. And then we'd have to like <laughs> recapture the moment, reset up everything. And then Maggie has multiple clips that she would have to Put merge together. together. So now we have a Sony. Oh, I'm not going to remember. It's an EVZ10. I might be saying those numbers wrong, <laughs> but I use this camera now for the podcast as well as my YouTube stuff. It's a great vlog camera. It has yes. like this dummy feature on it that you can just put it on IntelliShoot and it makes the lighting and everything so that you don't have to tweak that on your own. So it pushed me to get a new camera for my YouTube. It runs continuously. We could talk for two hours, you guys, and it wouldn't oh, shut off. Amazing. And we also got an adapter, an AC adapter. So that plugs into it. So the power is constantly running on it. And yes, that 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 has helped. I forgot about that, yeah. that we were using a different camera when we first started. Yeah. And this camera, you know, just gives this added glow <laughs> to our 43 year old faces not that we look bad or anything but it's just like it has a soft it has a soft it it has a soft skin effect and it's not like a filter that's not a filter it's not a beauty filter but it does just soften it just a little it's almost like the most optimal lighting or something it gives Mm -hmm. but anyways so that was also different (laughs) so we've just come a long way in 22 episodes and I'm proud of us how we have leveled up well I'm so glad that you talked about that because personally I don't edit so I don't I don't edit these videos Maggie takes the time and that is her job that she has learned that skill in this season which I'm very proud of you friend because you had zero experience and I know (laughs) you had a lot of hiccups along the way but you've persevered yes and you've been consistent and so I don't look at the content as closely and diligently as you do. I always listen to them and watch them when they come out. But yes, that actually encourages me. Maybe I'll go watch, you know, episode two and then watch episode 20 so I can see the difference (laughs) in how we've grown in it. Yeah, we have grown. And I think my editing skills have grown. All right. The more that I've done it, I've gotten better and the transitions are smoother. So yeah, it was good for me to go back and look at where we started compared to where we're at now because it was an encouragement to me. Awesome. And that's what I say on YouTube is just like make a video and every time make something better. I think we've figured out our lighting. We've figured out a few. There's still some things that happen. We're like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But we're doing it the best that we can. We don't have a producer. Um, So maybe one day we will. I'm going to speak that speak that into existence. But it just goes to show that you can literally start from zero and do something. And we are living proof of that. So yes. Yeah. So let's talk about our top three performing videos of the year. Okay. Um, I'm going to name them first. And then you tell me if you're surprised or if it's what you expected, because I put this list together um, and just gave it to Christina before we hit record. So okay. she didn't know I mean, maybe you had an idea, but you didn't know for sure what our top performing videos were. So our number one top performing video was our Katie Scott interview. Which I'm not surprised at at all. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Our second top performing video was our initial um, Mm -hmm. introduction, episode one, Influencing with Integrity where we just introduced ourselves and talked about um, what the podcast was going to be about. And then the third one was you revealing your YouTube earnings, episode 15. So let's talk about them. Okay, well, I'm not very surprised by this list. Um, but I, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I would bet like $100 that the influence with integrity, even though it had very high viewership, that the watch hours on that are probably one of our lowest videos is Maybe what I would you think. could probably Because be it was right. the first one that we put out. We obviously did a big push on it. People are nosy and they want to see what you're doing. And they probably watched a minute of it and didn't even <laughs> like <laughs> never and never came back. So I kind of want to just throw that one out of there because I don't even think it counts. Okay. <laughs> Although 
Like we did make the video. Yes. We and did. some people watched it, but I would I would assume that the watch hours are not high on that. And I actually might look that up when you are talking because okay. I because inquiry minds. Well, enough. I have to say our number four was our friendship episode with our friend Melissa. And I know the watch hours on that one were very high. We're very high. Like our and average watch time was over 11 minutes for that one, which is really good. That's really good. And that one is super shocking to me. And I know our other friendship one did really well as well mm-hmm. without a lot of, you know, promotion on those episodes. And the one, the most recent one that you're talking about that we did with our friend with Melissa, terrible lighting. Yes. Um, <laughs> audio terrible because it was the first time we ever did the handheld. And so I'm screaming into my microphone. You can barely hear Maggie. <laughs> and Melissa has never been on a YouTube video before. Um, but it doesn't surprise me because the content in it is just us. Like yeah. that is just how we live our life. It's the thing that I think has propelled us to have a lot of joy and mm-hmm. peace in our life. And out of that overflow, all the business stuff tends to work. So I can see why people would relate to that video and want to watch that video a lot. I think our, our bodies, ourselves, we crave intimacy and friendship. Yes. And yes. in this world where everybody is very opinionated, <laughs> um, it can be challenging. And so walking through some of that stuff and like, how do we deal with stuff? How have we dealt with heartbreak and friendships, betrayal? Um, how have we moved through when we've made mistakes and apologizing and moving forward in that? That is, anybody can relate to that, I think. So yeah. when I break that down, I'm like, oh, that's probably why that video did so well. But again, it's just encouragement to me, like don't get so caught up in the technical and making everything look so professional and beautiful because at the end of the day, it's the message that matters. Yes. I so that's that. not even on our list, but the, the shout out to yeah. shout out to video number four. Um, the Katie Scott interview does not shock me at all. That thing went buku bananas. It's by far our number one. A, obviously, because Katie has a huge presence on YouTube. So people are just searching for her and are like, oh, I want to know her story. Um, So thank you, Katie. I don't think we would still be doing this podcast if we didn't have that interview with you. It was just a huge boost of encouragement to our channel. It brought a lot new, a lot of new followers to us. And it was just an encouraging story. It was. And it still continues to be one of our top videos today, even though it was filmed back in July. So we love you, Katie. Thanks yes, for the we thanks do. for the boost. For and hopefully storm. she'll be back maybe in twenty twenty four. Well and, and want to do an interview again. And if we figured out how to do remote videos, we can call all the way up to Canada to give a little chat with her. I love that. It was also so fun to just see how much her audience loves her so Oh my gosh, I they mean, love her so much. Maybe the most comments on that video too mm-hmm. of just people saying, Oh my gosh, I love Katie. She's mm-hmm. so wonderful. And I I agree. She had so much wisdom and insight and I just love the way she has been so authentically herself yep. and created such an engaged community of followers. Mm-hmm. So that was a really fun episode. And I too was not surprised <laughs> when it was our number one episode. And I have a little insight behind revealing my YouTube earnings. Obviously, it was very clickbaity. We said at the beginning of the video, like, I'm going to share with you how much money I have made on YouTube in my lifetime. And people are nosy. So I think that's why people wanted to see that yes. <laughs> and I made the thumbnail very clickbaity that had like the amount of money blurred out so they knew they were going to get that if they came and watched that video um, and that was when we first discovered if I post when we post a video if we post it in my community tab on YouTube it gets picked up more it gets more impressions yes. and people will come over and it's not like spamming like my audience over there and putting it in their face. It's just sharing on the community tab and knowing like, Hey, I have a new podcast up. This is what it's about. And we've gotten a lot new viewership from doing that. And we yeah. started to do ever since we posted that video and figured that out. We're like, Oh, especially like right when we post it, cause YouTube really likes to see views right away when you post something. So it helps us get a little boost right at the beginning there using my other platforms to bring people to Cypress room. Um, so I think that that really, really worked on that first episode because yes. that's the first one we posted to. And now we're doing that consistently. And it's kind of helped with our average view numbers on our podcast. So yes, people are always curious about money. Well, I, I mean, what's the point? Yeah. Like you could at the end of the day, <laughs> like you can be like, oh, this is what I do. And I do this and I do this. But at the end of the day, somebody wants to know, well, how much money did you make off that video? Well, yeah. how much money do you make off of affiliate sales? And I used to be very, I guess, um, protective of that because I didn't want to seem like I was bragging B I didn't want to like put it out there and people be like well that's not any money there's like all these things that hold you back from doing it 
But the more that I have shared that stuff in the past couple of years, the more empowering it has been for other people and for me too, because it like encourages other people to be vulnerable that way. And all the content creators that I follow are pretty vulnerable with what they make and the knowledge that they have and wanting to share and feel like there is enough out there for everybody to benefit from it. And it's just being honest with my audience because things started shifting with me where I just wasn't flipping furniture as much. I never really talked about the profits I was making from my furniture. And I just got, I got to this place where I was like, I'm not fully being myself kind of on Instagram and stuff when I show up. And so I just made this video this year being like, listen, I make most of my money off of creating content and here's why, and here's how I do it and all the things. And so just incorporating that more into my content has been a benefit for me. But I guess in the beginning, I always felt scared to do that because I didn't want to seem like I was bragging or like, I just felt like it was really personal but my whole life is not personal anymore. So I might as well just share it because it gets me fired up and it gets yeah. other people fired up. And it's like, why not? Well, it shows people what's possible. Yeah, I think. I mean, and if someone doesn't interpret it that way, that's not yeah. a, your fault. Oh you my know? gosh. And I just watched the most inspiring video and I'm going to butcher his name. Ugh. I'll put it down in the description box, but I'm pretty sure his name is his name Ali? Oh my gosh, I don't know. He's a huge YouTuber. He went to like medical school. He's based in London. And um, we're going to put it right here because I can't remember it. But I just watched one of his videos last night. He's one of the people who taught me I did a Skillshare class of his, where he taught me how to like edit and final cut. So he just started his YouTube channel, I think like in 2017 part time while he was going to medical school. Well, he's full time on YouTube now. And he just did a video where he's kind of like traveling around and doing other things. So he did like a catch up video on his YouTube. And it just popped up the thumbnail got me. And he went through every year, like the first year he was on YouTube, he made he lost money. The second year he was on YouTube, he made $20,000. The next year he made $100,000. The next year he made like 4 million. And then he did and last year, I made four and a half million. And this year we're projected to make maybe like 10 million or something like that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, I mean, and he has 5 million subscribers and he has books and courses and all these different things. But like he started in 2017, you guys, and he has a million dollar company now, <laughs> like that. That's and incredible. so I watch him and I look at his video, like you can do this thing on the back end on YouTube where you compare like your channel to his channel. And he gets, I think in the last month, I've gotten 630,000 views and he's gotten 7.5 million. And I'm like, see, this just wow. shows you like, it's wild, like the potential that is out there and the things that people are doing on yes. YouTube and on being a content creator. It's wild. That one blew me away. So I'm going to share that video with you guys down below. If you need a little bit of encouragement going into 2024, watch that video. Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's talk about um, our personal favorite episodes. Like which one did you love doing and watching back? Um, I know what mine is. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Okay, my f- my favorite were our f- two friendship episodes. the Our friendship story, episode six, and then our friendship video with Melissa, okay. episode 17. I, I don't know. That stuff just gets me excited talking about community, building community, friendships. I had prayed for so long in my life um, to have community and have deep friendships that both those... E- episodes felt very like a redeeming moment for me because just to be able to talk about the friendships God's given me and what I have learned in my journey to build community uh, was just my favorite thing and encourage other people out there who feel lonely and want to build community that they can do the same. Yeah, those were fun. And I, I think both of those Well, the first one was definitely your idea, like our friendship story. Well, yeah, sort of mine, sort of your husband's idea. Oh, okay. Okay. And then that one did so well. We're like, we need to do, we need to do that again. (laughs) And we were going on vacation and we're like, okay, how are we going to make a video? And I think that one just came along and Melissa said yes. So I loved how that, and I just looked at that one last night when we were preparing for this and I was like, wow, this is one of, it's our number four video. Yeah. I'm like, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. And it just shows you that. People are curious and Mm -hmm. that there is that desire to have community and deep friendships. So I love that. And, you know, I was talking to you too before we hit record about kind of my word for the year was community. And I knew it was relating to my business. And I think part of it was starting Cypress Room. But part of it is I 
like actually do have a core of people now that do what I do, but I also care about their lives and their families. <laughs> and we talk almost on a daily basis on a chat type of thing. Like we were discussing that we do with Melissa Voxer. That's a video thing. We do Marco Polo. Um, and this is, you know, I've been kind of doing this for a long time and this is the first time that I have like a real like tribe. I've heard people throw that word around and I've tried to have tribes before and they've never worked out. So again, if this is something that you're desiring, it can help your business too, because I have real friendships with these people. I know their lives, but we're also sharing business information that is helping us go to the next level in different areas that I never would have thought possible. And it was all because of community. Um, but I have, it has taken me some time. I have been burned by some friends in the industry. I probably have burned some people and don't know that I've done it. And so just know that those things like do take time, um, but it's possible. And I've had a huge breakthrough in that area. And I don't think that I would have been able to do that business wise if I didn't have that success personally with you and mm -hmm. Melissa first and how you modeled it for me and how we did it together. And I'm like, okay, now I can take this into this business aspect one. And it's really, really helping to grow my business and keep me grounded and help with the burnout and all those things. So it's so interesting you say that because I was thinking of, you know, not only are those friendship episodes sort of redeeming for me because it was something I had prayed for for a long time, but even um, doing this podcast is redeeming in that in building community in a different way. I got this word a long time ago that I was going to be a champion of women. And at the time... <gasps> I remember this. <laughs> at the time, I like had no like, community what? around me. <laughs> so it was laughable. It really like, was. Are you sure this is for me? Wait, are you trying to say this to the person behind me? Yes. It was one of those moments where it was something that I was like, yeah, right. Like, what are you talking about? I barely have one friend. Aww. And I it just kind of tucked it back in the corner of my mind. We were talking before we got on here about creating community and how we are doing it through this podcast, even if we don't realize it. And we've just had a couple of moments over the last couple of weeks yeah. where people have given us some confirmation that it's not just our friends and family listening to us, yeah. but people that we don't know who are appreciating and loving this content. And they're a part of this community, even if we don't realize it. And so I'm thankful for that. Yeah. And if you've never commented or reached out to us, we're so thankful for you. If this is your first episode or your 20th episode or your 22nd episode, please just say hi in the comments. We would yes. love to know who you are. We would love to pray for you. We would love to answer any questions that you have. So please engage with us. We, we want yes. it. We want to know you. We do. We're going to keep showing up and keep talking to you, even if you don't talk back to us, but we would appreciate and really do want to know you and your stories. So yes. And I think we're up when I looked before we hit record to 823 subscribers, which is amazing. And I don't take for granted that that is 823 physical people yeah. who have taken the time to hit that subscribe button. So thank you if you have. And if you haven't, we'd love if you would and be part of this community and get all of our notifications of when we post new content. So and if you feel so inclined, watch the whole episode because we're still trying to get monetized. Yeah. <laughs> we, need, we need those watch hours. We're at 2000 657 yeah and we need 4,000 by June yes we're total do so it. we're we only need like I don't know how many more is that <laughs> what did I just say we only need a little bit a little over 1200 <gasps> more hours so those were my favorite episodes what what were yours my favorite episode I think is more for a personal reason than the actual content of the episode. Does that make sense? I mean, yes. the content was good, but I think my favorite episode um, is our mental health episode. Oh, that's a good one. Um, and yeah. it's just because like, I felt like in my spirit, we were supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. which, and I didn't want to do it. And then we recorded it. And I'm like, I don't think we could ever put that out. It felt way too vulnerable and personal. And then we sat on it and prayed on it. And we're like, no, this is supposed to go out. And it went out. And guess yes. what? Nothing bad happened. Yes. <laughs> so what I learned is that fear is a liar. Yes. And I don't know what I was afraid of. Because honestly, like all those things have happened. All those things are true. I guess I was like afraid of people's response to it. Like, 
if they didn't like the way that I talked about mental health or if I overgeneralized something or if my experience was different from somebody, I didn't want to offend or hurt anybody's feelings. But at the end of the day, it was my story. It's my journey. I know everybody's journey is going to be different. And so for me personally, moving through all those emotions, like I could never speak on that and actually recording it yeah. and saying like, oh, we should never put that out and then putting it out and actually some positive things have happened from it and really nothing negative happened. It just helped me learn that in a space like this, where you are sharing and being vulnerable and maybe sharing things that I normally wouldn't share anywhere else, that I don't have to be like afraid. That I don't have to be afraid. That yes. fear's a liar, yes. I guess. <laughs> And I think it was just good. I don't know. I just thought I love mental health. I think it's super important if you have the means to work on it and you want to. I think therapy is super powerful. We were actually just chatting before we turned on record. And I think I'm going to start going to therapy again at the beginning of the year. I just have some things that I'd like to work on. Um, so that was my favorite episode. I love that. And I, th I think the process that you just described yourself going through, moving all the way through it and putting it out there. I just think that's powerful because I think people get stuck in mm -hmm. that, the fear cycle there yeah. instead of putting it out there and then realizing, oh, it was okay. It was None okay. of the things I worked up in my mind that could happen happened. actually happened. Yeah. And so I love that you moved through that process. And mm -hmm. I feel that like that's, that process is probably the biggest thing I've learned <laughs> through this podcast yeah. is to move through that fear and to just push through to the other side yeah and yeah that's it's a hard thing to do mm -hmm. it's scary but worth it so that was my favorite okay so the last category talking about our episodes we've done so far is what do you think our most underrated video is well i wanted to say bammer rush and in sync of course <laughs> <laughs> but I just had so much fun doing them. They were top, they were current topics that we wanted to try out and see like if we could get some other followers like piggybacking off of trending topics. So it was like a lesson that yes. we tried it. They didn't do so well. There's still some <laughs> of my favorites because I was just authentically being me talking about stuff that I would talk about with my friends. Yes. Not everybody, you know, loved them and that's okay. Lesson learned. Yes. So th those are my hidden underrated videos, but my most underrated video that if you haven't watched this one yet, and you've liked some of our other stuff that you've watched, and you have not watched the consistency episode, I would go watch that one because I do believe it's boring. I mean, no one's gonna be like, ooh, consistency, I can't wait to listen to that. Like it's not a very clickable video, but the information that is in that one, it is the core building blocks to why I am sitting here and I have a business and I have a brand and I have a career is because of that consistency and putting that work in when you don't know what is going to come out of it on the other side. So it really is a superpower. Yes. It was Maggie's idea to do that episode. I think there's so much gold in it. And the remote interview that we just did today, that consistency theme came up again. There was a yes. lot of, there's a lot of viral success that happens but you cannot go viral unless you're consistent. You're not going to yes. put up one piece of content and it goes viral. But if you put up 500 pieces of content, you have a lot more chances to go viral. So if you're one of those people that's like, I've been trying to do this content creation thing for a while, but it's just not hitting. So I'm just, you know, I show up sometimes. I don't show up sometimes. I come back and I'm like, sorry, I needed some time off. Like if you're not willing to put in that work of being consistent, you're never going to have that opportunity maybe to go viral and have it become a full-time career for you. So I think that is the most underrated, under listened to podcast and you should go give it a listen if you yeah. haven't yet. I agree with you on that one. Um, but consistency isn't very fun. No, or it's sexy not sexy or it's like boring. a juicy It's piece annoying. Of content. Honestly, it's annoying to like have to put on work that you never know if you're going to get the fruit of that work back. It's annoying. It is. But it's not fair. <laughs> it's a theme, though, that goes beyond just work and content creation, though, in any area of your life, health, fitness, you know, whatever it is, you have to be consistent to see the results. Yeah. So I, I love that episode, too, and think what it a, was underrated. Yeah, what about you? But the one I chose was our generosity episode. I love the generosity episode. And, I, and that was probably just me personally. I thought it was so fun to just share 
the testimonies of when I have been generous, how God has been so faithful to come through for me in a time when I was in need. And I, yeah. I think I needed that reminder, um, especially as we're coming into the Christmas season and it is about being, there are so many opportunities to be generous. Sometimes I get like, oh my gosh, is everybody just needing something? But that episode just really reminded me why, like, I don't want to ever miss an opportunity to be generous because there are so many more times in my life, even that weren't mentioned on that episode where I have chose to be obedient and generous and God Mm -hmm. has just shown himself to be faithful, um, in our finances. And so I feel like that was an, an underrated episode. For underrated. Me. Well, and I know, I remember we talked a lot about of just being generous with your time, that it doesn't always have to be finances. And I've seen a lot of breakthrough in that area this year of just, again, having that community, having a tribe where we are sharing what we're earning, who, where we're earning it from, um, different things that we're not doing. So we are sharing like information that people will be like, Oh, you need to just keep that up for yourself and not share that with other people. But we're sharing it because we want to see our other, our friends succeed and not because I want to get something out of them. <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'm being generous with like, here's this thing I'm putting this out in the air and I'm literally getting nothing back. Like you at this moment, you have nothing to share with me. You like, that it's not transactional, if that makes sense. It's just like, I'm going to put this out into the world. And I know it's going to come back to me at some point. And so if you aren't in the place where you feel like you can be generous with your finances, like be generation, be generous with the information that you have that is proprietary, that you like, maybe feel like you should be paid for maybe start giving that away to people who are in need that you know, can't pay for that information. And it's going to help them with their business or help them what and whatever endeavor they're doing like that. That is very powerful. Yes, Knowledge is. is very powerful and sharing it freely without expecting anything back for those who are in need is the same thing as giving money away. Yes, exactly. I think it also challenged me to be generous with encouragement and Mm. just words of kindness, um, not just keeping it inside, especially as I'm like scrolling social media, like to just write the comment, the words of encouragement, send the DM, even when I'm out in the stores or at a restaurant to say something kind, to look someone in the eyes. It just, it was a great reminder to me for all of those things that, you know, come under that umbrella of generosity to continue doing them, that even if I don't see a return, that it's worth doing and how much I appreciate it too. Mm -hmm. When people are generous with their time, Mm -hmm. their information, their encouragement, Mm -hmm. when I'm in on the receiving end of that. So yeah, so go check out those episodes. If you haven't watched them back, they're available for you. (laughs) And we would appreciate the watch hours. (laughs) And we would love to hear from you and what your opinions are. Do you agree on our favorite episodes do you have a favorite episode if you've been here for a couple do you have an underrated episode we want to hear about them in the comments yes on youtube if you're not watching on youtube go to the comments (laughs) so what would you say is the biggest thing you've learned since starting a podcast um that i'm never gonna have everything figured out and in my mind if i think oh this Like if I just had this, if I just had this, it would make it easier. If I just had that, if we just had a producer, if we just had an editor, if we just had, you know, an assistant, if we just had this, it would just be easier. And would it be? Yeah. But would I be missing out on some of the lessons we're supposed to learn? Probably. Um, So I guess what I've learned this year is that it's not going to be easy. um, And it's probably challenging for a reason. And it's refining me in ways that I probably won't know for a while Mm -hmm. and have to live in that uncomfortableness of like, I'm exhausted. I don't want to do this. I have no ideas. Like just learning to live in that uncomfortableness and that constant challenge. And that I am being refined, even though I don't see it on a day to day basis. Yes. I think mine's similar, Uh, except that for me, it was more about, I don't need to have it all figured out to just get started. I, used to really always be that type of person who needed all the details in place. I needed to feel proficient and able and like I've got it all figured out before I ever just jump in and start something. And I think this has taught me that sometimes you just need to take the faith step to move forward and get something started. And 
learn along the way, get a little bit better every time. You know, I didn't know how to edit a video at all. I, I wouldn't say at all. I had done some short form editing, but never in Final Cut Pro um, using editing software. So that intimidated me. I had never been front facing on anything in social media before. So, you know, there were a lot of things that could have kept me from doing this at all. And I'm proud of myself for, you know, learning to just uh, take this step forward and do it in, even though I don't have it all figured mm -hmm. out, I don't have it figure, all figured out and I'm still learning, still trying to get a little bit better every time. Um, but yeah, I'd say that is my biggest lesson learned that and to quiet the noise, the negative voices. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like our negative voices have been worse in this arena and under this brand than any outside negative voice. I feel oh, like yes. we've been our own worst enemy like yes. we don't even I think maybe we've gotten one negative comment <laughs> yes which is like amazing even if there's 800 plus people here that's amazing that we've only had one comment that we're like me we need to delete that one that's weird um but yeah most of our negative talk has come from ourselves so yes. we've definitely had to push through that and understand that there's purpose in what we're doing and and we feel called to what we're doing but we definitely do feel I think unworthy and unequipped mm -hmm. But yeah. that's okay because yes. we <laughs> we believe in Jesus. I know we talk a lot about that here. Um, and I hope that we make it really clear that no matter what stage of life you're in, no matter what your religious background is, no matter what your upbringing has been, is that you are welcome here. I know that's yes. not always the case. And we have gotten a few comments about that. Like, um, we're going to talk about Jesus because he's so instrumental in our life, in our business. He's the whole reason that we're sitting here doing this podcast. I don't think we would have done it any other way unless he would have asked us. I had no desire to do this, but he really asked us to do this. And I know some people don't understand that. Um, and I'm totally okay with that. And I know that you probably have run into your life maybe where people have weaponized religion. Um, I know we see in our country a lot where people have politicized um, Christianity and Jesus and I just, if that has happened to you, I am so sorry that that has happened to you. And I want you to know that this is a safe sp space where this is not going to happen to you, but we do have to be authentically ourselves. And, you know, when we first sat down to do this podcast, we're like, how much are we going to talk about Jesus? Like, are we going to talk about Jesus? Are we not gonna? And we tried to like make all the plans and figure, and we just sat down and we started talking and he came out of our mouths about 10 times in the first episode. And I'm like, well, there's our answer. Um, it's just such an integral part of our life. It's the reason that I have joy. It's the reason that I have peace. So I'm going to share about him with you. And if you don't get it, or it makes you feel weird, I'm okay with that uncomfortableness. And I hope you are too, um, because I love you right where you're at. And I don't need you to do anything or perform in any type of way. Um, so yeah, I don't know where that came from. But I just felt like they needed to know that. I know. <laughs> But I like it and I okay. agree with all of it. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to what does the future look like for the Cypress Room? What does 2024 look like for the Cypress Room? Well, I, I'm hoping that our remote interviews are successful and we can do more of those with people of all different diverse backgrounds, niches, different businesses, um, male, female, you know, just all kinds of different people mm -hmm. um, on the podcast that we can learn from. I don't know what else I hope for next year, just that we dive deeper into a lot of different uh, subject areas that we create an even bigger community. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we'd love to be monetized in 2024. <laughs> So that's on the table as well. I don't know. What do you think? Um, yes, I want to hear more people's stories. I want to have people on in the Cypress room with us that you guys can learn from that all look different, that all have different backgrounds that come from, you know, different social classes that have different religious backgrounds that have, you know, different family situations that they've grown up in. I think um, nowadays, especially how social media just feeds us what we want to hear. I think our friend groups sometimes can be very like echo chamber. Like we surround ourselves with people that we're comfortable with and that maybe think the same way that we do. So I would love to have people on here that I wouldn't maybe necessarily run into in my everyday life or follow 
and give them a platform to share who they are, who their story is, because I want to learn from them. I don't want to be an echo chamber. I want to know lots of different people and lots of different backgrounds. Um, And I have been able to do that through through different conferences that I go to. And I've met some amazing people. So I would love to have them on this channel. And like you said, I would love to have some people outside of content creation, definitely outside of furniture flipping. Again, we've started with what we're comfortable with. We've had a couple of people outside of that arena, but I would love to have all different kinds of niches um, and entrepreneurs in here and just glean from them and hear what they've been through. Because, you know, we always talk about how testimonies are so powerful and you don't know until you know. So we got to get some people on here that are going to tell us what we need to know. Yes. I love that. I'm excited for 2024. And yeah, we're going to have our one year anniversary in 2024. Yeah. You guys didn't, you guys didn't get to see the Cypress room until June whatever, June 14th. I don't even remember the date that we officially launched, but it was a thing since January. Yes. Yeah. It was. January is when everything kind of started stirring Mm -hmm. and we took action. (laughs) Just took us six months to get it out into the world, which is wild. uh, Well, I want to say kudos, friend, and congratulations Mm -hmm. for we have done it in a year. I mean, we have done it. We've done something. Yes. We took a step forward. We had this idea. We actually put it into fruition. It was not easy. It was not easy. No. And it's still, we were talking about this today. It's still not easy in between filming. In between filming, I want to give up and be like, this is just, I can't, I can't put any more time into this. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Um, but then every time we turn this camera on and we sit down and we talk to you and every time an episode goes live, I'm like, okay, this is why we're doing this. This is why we're doing this. Yes. Um, so it's very cool to be able to look back over this past year, not just looking forward to next year and what all we want to do, but looking back and being like, yes, we have accomplished some things. Are we doing it? No, not absolutely no. not. We're not even making money. We're still in the hole, you guys. <laughs> but this is like, we are doing this real time, like encouraging you when you have a dream on your heart or you have something that you feel like someone's put inside of you that you need to share with the world, we want you to do it. So I hope this last year has been, you can see the testimony of just stepping forward and doing something. And we're hopeful. Yes. Looking forward to 2024 that it's going to grow, that our, you know, our time will expand, our capacity will expand for whatever this is going to become. And we're just grateful that you're along for the journey. Yes, absolutely. Well, so let's talk. Can we transition? We can transition to favorite things. But I do feel like I need to note before, if you're watching us on video, we're very festive today. Yes, we are. We are colorful. We are in red. I normally do not do red at all. But this was purposeful. This was purposeful to be like cherry, cherry, (laughs) cherry and merry. And I'm wearing I even put a red lip on it looks to be so festive. In, in honor of the woman of the year, the time woman of the year, T. Swift. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a Swifty, but I do have appreciation for everything that she's done this year. <laughs> yes. and this So is, shout out to her. This is like our end of year sign off before we... Yeah, we're going to take a little break. Fully engage in the holiday season yeah. and our kids are going to be out of school. Mm-hmm. So we're going to enter a season of rest. Are yeah. you going to enter into your season of rest, Christina? I'm trying real hard. Yes. Yes. I have a couple more deadlines that I have to get done, but I am going on a cruise for like eight days at the end of the year. So I feel like that's going to set it off right because I'm not paying for internet. So you y'all will not see me. (laughs) You will not hear from me. And yes, off the grid. Yeah. And Cypress Room will be taking a little bit of break. This will be our last episode and we will come back at some point in 2024. We're not going to promise exactly what week because we don't really know. In January, Um, though. But we'll be back in January and we'll be, you know, ready to go. But I am looking forward to a little bit of a little bit of a break. Yes. 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 It will be good. Okay. So favorite things. Favorite things. This is a big favorite thing. This is hard. This we are going to say our favorite purchases of 2023. So Mm -hmm. this is top of the list. Something that I would repurchase again and again has changed my life. Should I just go ahead and go? Yes, you just go because I feel like you're fired up and ready to go. Oh, because I am so excited. You know, I redid a space in my house for an office this year and I bought a standing desk and a walking pad and it is my favorite purchase of this entire year. It has changed my workflow. And you haven't even had it for that long. No, I've only had it a month about and... I love it. I feel like I am so much more productive in my work. I am able to get more done. It's just, 
it keeps me moving, keeps me focused, and I'm getting my steps in, and I've just really enjoyed it. In fact, my husband has been jealous, and every time Ooh, I like leave he's the house, in your desk. he's in my office Nuh-uh. with the standing desk <laughs> and the walking pad, because he has an office upstairs, and he just has a sit- regular sit-down desk. So, And Maggie has a Harry Potter closet. Well, yes, it's not under I the do. stairs, but it's a little, it's her closet that she's working in. <laughs> yes, it is. And I'm going to post um, some videos of it. It's not as like under the, the stairs type It's not of under Harry, the stairs. It's actually very, it's a very nice closet. And that's why she can fit a whole office in there. <laughs> yes. So that Utilizing is, wasted space. I love it. It really, it's called, I, I really think 2023 has been the year of making it work for me. <laughs> working with what I have and that is what my office is so yeah I would definitely recommend for anybody who has to get up and walk around at certain intervals of your work day if you work from home a standing desk and a walking pad has been amazing for me okay nice I've been thinking about that in here for Michael because he sits at his computer all day and I think he would enjoy that so maybe we'll see and then we could share like when he's out of town I could use it so yeah it's nice you have me thinking about it but I don't know I don't know if I could do it um but that's really cool it is yeah okay mine technically I didn't purchase this and I don't even know if it was purchased last year or this year but I started using it this year (laughs) So I'm going to claim this as my favorite purchased item of 2023, and it's an ember mug. And if you guys don't know what an ember mug is, it is a mug that self-heats itself, and it connects to your phone. I honestly don't ever use it with my phone, but you can set the temperature that you want on your phone, and it has a little charging station, and it keeps your coffee hot, I think, for like four to six hours. I'm a very slow coffee drinker. So I used to constantly microwave my coffee and then I would forget that it's in there and then I wouldn't finish it, whatever. And so my husband bought this for me and I never used it. I'm like, that is ridiculous. Why would I ever use that? And then he started using it and I saw him using it and I was like, well, let me just try it out. And ever since I tried it out, I have not given it back to him. As you guys know, I have a latte machine that is my life. I have a flat white every day. And so I put my coffee in there every morning. My coffee is hot to the last sip. I actually like to drink my coffee sometimes before I go to the gym and don't finish it when I get there so I can leave it in the car. I come back out after my workout, my coffee is still hot and my car (laughs) smells incredible like a coffee house. It's it's wonderful. So it's dual fold. Um, I have bought these as gifts for people because no one wants to buy this for themselves because they're like, that's so bougie. I'm just going to let you know it's $150 pretty ridiculous for a coffee mug since that I have like 20 coffee mugs in my um, cupboard right now, but I don't use any of them. I use my Ember mug every day. I could probably get rid of all those coffee mugs. I rinse it out every day, use it every day. And the people that I've bought it for, they're like, that has changed my life. So the Ember coffee mug. If you know someone who likes tea or coffee and takes a long time to drink it, it would be the perfect Christmas gift. But again, it has to be someone you really love if you want to spend $150 on them. It was on deal during, you know, Amazon Black Friday deal, but you you missed out on that. You could have got it for 50 bucks off. So (laughs) wow, that's a big discount. Yeah, it was a huge discount. But those make the perfect gifts because it's something nobody would really you would never buy it for for yourself. yourself. You never would be a great group gift. Yeah, too. I think it was, it's a great giveaway. I think for that I should do a giveaway for that for sure. Because it's a very easy giveaway. And it's an affordable giveaway to do if you're doing um, influencing full time. So maybe I'll do that. That's a great idea. Yeah. So Ember Mug all the way. Well, this wraps up 2023. Oh my gosh, crazy. It's wild. Episode 22. Yes, episode 22. We did Wowza. it. We made it through 22 episodes. This is amazing. All right. Well, <laughs> we're gonna sign off for 2023. We want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Hope you have the most wonderful holiday season with your family and friends. Mm -hmm. Like Christina said, we will be back in January with new podcast episodes. Um, So if you aren't already, subscribe and hit those notifications so that you're alerted when we do. Yeah. And if you have a a big break coming up, this would be a great time to binge any past episodes of the Cypress Room to help us get monetized and encourage your soul and encourage your soul. Yes. (laughs) And also, you know, we are on TikTok. We are on Instagram. So at 
the Cypress Room. Mm -hmm. Same handle if you want to go follow us over there. We post things over there that maybe we don't post on YouTube. So it's just another way to engage as part of our community. And we would appreciate the support. Yeah. I guess that's it. I guess that's it until 2024, you guys. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you next time in the Cypress Room. See you next time.